America, land of the free, home of the brave, and society of lavish spenders. Now these habits may seem normal to us here back in the States, but go anywhere abroad and explain your habits to them and you will see jaws drop and eyes pop out of their heads. So here are three things that Americans waste their money on. Let's go. Starting off with excessively large homes. Now the average house size in America is about 2,000 square feet, but it's common to come across houses that are 25, 3,000, even 3,500 square feet. Now with the fertility rate in America being about 1.7, that means an average family of four has about 600 to 800 square feet per person in a house. Now that's a lot of house for a very few amount of individuals. So with the fertility rate continuing to go down year by year, essentially people are just buying really big houses for families that on average are decreasing in size. You also have massive mortgage payments. You have to pay the lawn care. You have to make sure the maintenance is good. And you also have to pay your utility bills, making sure that you can heat, cool, and light these massive houses. Other big factors to consider are eventually when your kids move out, that's gonna be even more square footage per person in that house. And also when you decide to retire and downsize, you're gonna notice that with inflation, you're gonna get less bang for your buck when you eventually buy this new house because it's gonna be so expensive for a very small house. And is that worth it? Next up is American wedding culture. Now I'm sure you've seen it in movies and TV shows all the time where people go all out for their weddings. Now I'm talking massive layered cakes, gorgeous dresses and suits, the best venue possible, the best food possible, photos, entertainment, videos, everything, the whole nine yards. And then they're hit with a bill for $50,000. That's, it's ludicrous, right? What actually inspired this video was I saw that a young couple took out a loan for their wedding, right? A loan. If you want to have a big wedding and you can't afford a big wedding, don't have a big wedding, right? It's not about how big and grand it is. It's about the wedding. It's about the people, the friends and family, and the memories you're going to be making with your, your, your now spouse, right? A small, a small wedding and a big wedding mean no different, right? So maybe have a friend make the cake. Maybe have a friend do the video. Maybe have a local band be the entertainment, right? These are all things you consider to make it still a memorable occasion but not start off your life owing $50,000, right? You're gonna have hopefully a new family, a new house, some cars, and all your other day-to-day -day expenses. Why add wedding debt to that? And also on a side note, a large portion of Americans get divorced. So you may thank yourself in the future come five, 10 years saying, hey, thank you, save 10 grand on that. Could have been worse. So things to consider. And finally, cars. Americans love their cars. If you go down to any suburb in America, you will most likely see between two and four cars in the driveway. What's more, you'll see Americans buying brand new cars. So it's typical to see a car from two years ago, one year ago, or even this year, right? And the issue with brand new cars is that the second you drive it off the lot, already lost 10% of its value, 20% of its value. And in the first five years, it's probably already lost half of its value. So every time you drive it, you're just throwing money out the window, right? But you could have bought the exact same brand, exact same car five, 10 years ago for half that price, right? And it still does the exact same job. It takes you to the train station, takes you to the store, takes you to work, but you saved 20, 15 grand, but you decided to buy an expensive current new car. And the other thing that Americans do is that they buy foreign cars, which are usually very expensive and require very specific work, right? Sometimes local mechanics don't have access to the parts or the tools or skills to work on these cars. So you have to most times go to the dealers where you bought the car. And the issue with that is the dealers know that's the situation. So they can jack up the prices. A normal oil change at your local mechanic probably costs you, I don't know, X. But at this dealership, it probably costs 3X, 4X, because they know they're the only ones that can do it. And you have no choice but to pay. So in the end, if you can afford an expensive car, go for it. But if you can't and you're just doing it for show and you think it's fun, is it really worth the extra hundreds, thousands, even tens of thousands of dollars extra per year? Maybe not. I'm sure that there are tons of other ways that you think Americans waste their money. And if any come to mind, put them in the comments down below. I'd love to hear them. But with that, I'm Evan, and thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, then click on the video here. Also, if you haven't, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos.